God of grace, God of glory, as we come together today, guide us by your goodness to walk in your ways. Give us strength to seek your will above our own and help us to worship you with all of our heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. so we come to our confession. Reconciling God, forgive us when we make wrong choices, when our decisions are not of honesty and integrity. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when we hurt others by our words and actions. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when we judge others and think ourselves better. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when our relationships break down and we do not want to repair them. Reconciling God, we choose life. Forgive us when we don't strive for peace. Reconciling God, we choose life. Life in all its fullness. Amen. The reading is taken from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready you are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarrelling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labour. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26. <clears throat> you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. 
Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way or he may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit of God, come and fill our hearts and set in us afresh a confidence in your calling and hearts of love and hope. Amen. In today's Gospel reading, which is part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus continues his exploration of what living like a member of the Kingdom of God might look like. We are indeed invited to think about murder, the Sixth Commandment, and anger. Jesus is conveying hard words about the damage we cause to ourselves and others when we crave for things we can't have or compromise special trusts. Those commitments we make then break them in our daily lives. Jesus' teaching challenges the rabbis and the people of Israel on their rigid and narrow interpretation of the ancient Jewish law of Moses. They're stuck in the past, and sometimes we are too. Similarly, Paul, in our reading from 1 Corinthians, challenges in much the same way. He tells the Corinthians their behaviour, determined by their unforgiving and uncharitable ways, that they are behaving according to human inclinations. They fail to realise how the gospel of the cross has brought in a new way of defining and pursuing a forgiving and a loving Christ. I recently read a story about Alexander III. He was the Tsar of Russia from 1881 to 1894, and his rule was marked by autocratic leadership and repression, conduct familiar in our world today. And in particular, Alexander's persecution of the Jews. His wife, Maria, yes, provided a very stark contrast, being known especially for her generosity to those in need. On one occasion, it said, her husband signed an order consigning a prisoner to life in exile. The order simply read, pardon impossible, to be condemned and sent to Siberia. Maria changed the document by simply moving a comma. So the order read, pardon. Impossible to con condemn to Siberia. That was a small action that had a huge impact for that one human being. The Gospel of Matthew has been described as the swinging door that connects the Old Testament reader to the New. Jesus uses examples in everyday life as the grounding to build his case to move thinking and actions forward towards righteousness. He intensifies those familiar laws from the Old Testament for those who listen and extends their purposes in every facet of their lives 
and ours today. In the very first line of our reading, Jesus takes the readers far beyond the traditional teachings of the Torah. A murderous heart, he tells them, carries the same motive as the act of killing itself. Of course, not all anger is bad, though. Jesus gets angry. You and I do from time to time. And sometimes anger has very real and positive purposes. But Jesus is not referring to anger like this. He's referring to that anger that's driven by self-interest. The kind of anger that uh, creates real suffering for others. So Jesus is opening to us the door to new understanding, calling us to a new life in God, to love one another, and gives us freedom to choose a new, broader way of thinking about the law of Moses. I'm sure we can all think of many examples in our own lives of that moment of anger and frustration, temper, holding resentment, refusals to forgive or to forgive quickly, being quick to judgment and refusing to say we're sorry. And it'll go on with, I'm sure, familiar feelings that we all have in that regard. When we really know that it's more to do with our own struggles in life. So how do we see others? And how do we treat them in our own hearts? Jesus says, make peace with one another. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgiveness is an essential part of our redemption from anger. In seeking to develop our self-control. And so hard to admit to ourselves and to give that apology to others. Forgiveness and recognition of our failures are acts of being faithful to God. It is not looking retrospectively at those failures, but looking as God does into our hearts and not judging others, but being Christ-like. Love. Yes, love your enemies. Do not seek revenge, but love your enemies as your neighbours and pray for the persecutors. This is Jesus' message, message as, and it's as relevant now as when it was first given. It's one of the most important in the New Testament. The commandments are given to Israel and all Christians as a source of life, a source of God, the giver of life. They teach each one of us how to live in God's world, and these should become second nature to us, so we're able to look at their core and basis, which is our love for God and his love. Us. Are we then truly hearing and understanding the message of Jesus and the need for the right relationship with God? Or are we still stuck in the past? Are we moving that comma and ushering in Christ's new, deeper and brighter way of thinking 
opening the door from the old to the new, striving for forgiveness and reconciliation as part of our everyday life. We can be like Alexander III or the rabbis and people of Israel and remain stuck in the past with unforgiving and uncharitable thinking within our hearts. Or we can choose to be more like Maria, whose forgiving and charitable thinking and actions changed a prisoner's life by simply moving that comma. In Christ, God changed the comma that stood against us. To the good news of salvation, Christ's sacrificial saving acts for humanity. Pardon, impossible to condemn. One action with a huge impact for us all. I leave you with the question, where do you place your comment? Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, sometimes we all have anger and unforgiveness in our hearts. You know all our failings and weaknesses. Be merciful to us and forgive us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and produce in us love joy, peace, patience, kindness, and self-control. Help us to diffuse and defeat anger and pursue reconciliation in our lives and in our world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that we can join together in prayer, both online and in our physical services. Help us to be strengthened by your spirit so that we can make good choices in all that we do and say. Show us how to quench our willfulness with the power of your word. Prepare our hearts and minds to hear and receive your love. Father, you ask your church to be faithful and trustworthy. Lead each one of us to seek the path of truth and integrity and guide us to value and prioritise unity. We pray for our young people and our new people and thank you for their eagerness to understand more about you. We bring into your love those who do not yet know you and those who struggle to accept you. Prepare our hearts and minds to hear and receive your love. Father, we bring before you the world and all its problems. Strengthen those who seek the truth and those who campaign for justice and peace. Stir up hope in the people enduring war and persecution famine and hope, homelessness. Prepare their hearts and minds to hear and receive your love. Father, we bring before you our families, friends and neighbours. Help us to serve them with tireless love and selfless grace. Thank you for all who work hard to keep our communities running. Prepare our hearts and minds to hear and receive your love. Father, we bring before you the many people who are sick and suffering, at home, in hospital, and our loved ones in residential care. We pray for their healing 
and ask that you would help them to be aware of your comforting presence. Prepare their hearts and minds to hear and receive your love. Almighty God, thank you that through the cross of Jesus you have offered us a different path, a path of truth and humility, a path of wisdom and honesty. Thank you that when we seek you with all our heart, we are choosing that light. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. God has chosen me. Loving Lord, we want to use our strong feelings to bring change, our words to bring courage, our gifts to heal, our eyes to see you as you see, our hands to give help. Lord, we choose life. Amen. <laughs>